Hello everyone, this is chapter 8, production and cost in the short run. So here are the learning objectives for this chapter. We will learn about general concepts of production and cost analysis. We will examine the structure of short run costs using graphs. And we are going to focus on total cost, average cost, fixed cost and marginal cost curves. We will then examine the structure of short run production based on the relation among total, average and marginal cost. So we will learn about short run family of cost curves. And finally, relate short run cost to the production function using the average variable cost, average product and marginal cost and marginal product. This is a fun chapter. This is a great foundation chapter. And let's get started with part one. Production functions. What is production? Production is the creation of goods and services from, from inputs or resources. So production function looks like this. Total quantity produced Q equals, you know, is a function of inputs of production. So I have labor and capital. Okay. So I put labor and capital and produce certain level of output. That is the creation of goods and services, whatever I'm producing Q from inputs or resources, labor and capital. And I want to remind you of the product, uh, the profit function. Okay, so pi is for profit. Profit is going to be the difference between total revenue, total revenue minus total cost. So in this chapter, we'll start learning about maximizing. We're trying to make our profit maximum maximizing our profits so the one way to do achieve that actually is to make sure your total cost is minimum so if i don't know my costs right costs it's almost impossible to maximize my profits you're trying to minimize your costs to have maximum profit production function this is a production function example is a schedule showing it's it's actually a function literally a function but then once you plug in the values of labor and capital, you get quantity, right? It's a schedule showing the maximum amount of output Q that can be produced from any specified set of labor and capital given existing technology. When we say technology, we are talking about the ways in which we can combine labor and capital. Let's talk about different types of Production, variable proportions of production. What does it mean? Production in which given level of output Q can be produced with more than one combination of inputs. So if you look at, for instance, grocery store, right? Uh, now we have self-checkout, self-checkout uh, area, right? So in the past, we used to have one labor, one worker, cashier, one cash register capital right now you can actually get a similar work done with one labor right it's not exact replica uh one labor with let's say 10 one labor is overseeing 10 cash registers okay so maybe this is replacing five of these combinations okay so variable proportions of production means you can combine different different quantities of labor and capital to produce the same amount one example i give is like you can mow your lawn right lawn lawn mower lawn. mowing your lawn okay example two workers and two 24 inch lawn mower so two capital okay or you can use one worker and let's say four units of capital, which is basically one much more expensive, right? One uh, maybe right on lawnmower, which is 48 inches. So it's like you can use different proportions to do the same job. Fixed proportions of production. This is quite rare in the real wo world. Fixed proportions production is hard to come by, but it's basically a production in which one and only one ratio of inputs can be used to produce a good. Uh, example is one professor in a classroom lecture, uh, one classroom. Okay, 
So imagine putting two professors in a classroom talking at the same time. You can't create lecture. Or uh, if you're baking a cake, this is a great example. You're baking a cake, you need, for instance, two cups of flour, three eggs. Okay, I'm not going to write everything, but, you know, one cup of sugar, one cup of sugar, one cup of chocolate chip to make a chocolate chip cake, right? If you deviate from this uh, recipe, which I did one time, I actually, instead of putting one cup of oil, I put half, it came out really bad. Okay, so that's an example of fixed proportions production. Let's learn about technical and economic efficiency. In economics, we talk about two types of efficiency. Technical efficiency is producing the maximum amount of output for any given combinations of inputs and existing technology. So this technical efficiency is very similar to when we talk about efficiency in our you know, civilian life, not as an economist, but I say this car is efficient. When you talk about a car, this car is efficient. This car basically goes the maximum amount of miles, right? Let's say an efficient car, I don't know, goes 50 miles per gallon, right? Uh, per exist given combination of inputs and existing technology. We also have economic efficiency here. This is producing a given level of output at the lowest possible cost, okay? So here you are producing maximum amount, but economic efficiency producing a certain quantity at the lowest possible cost. Okay, let's talk about inputs. Inputs are, you know, we have capital and labor for simplicity in production. Inputs are considered variable or fixed depending on how readily their usage can be changed in the short run. This is a short run phenomena. Short run is a period of time that's too short. You can not change at least one input of production. That's usually capital. Okay, so I just got get I got ahead of myself. So let me backtrack. What's a variable input? Variable input is an input for which the level of usage may be varied to increase or decrease output. In the short run, labor is always variable. Basically, you have a restaurant, imagine hiring and firing people. Very easy. You can change your labor. You also have fixed inputs in the short run. An input for which the level of usage cannot be changed and which must be paid for even if no output is produced. So this is your capital. So let's say you sign a lease for your restaurant space. That's part of your capital spending. And you bought some kitchen equipment, already you paid for it, all the oven, everything, kitchen equipment. That is fixed. Uh, I'm not talking about pans and pots. I am talking about 100% heavy kitchen equipment that requires permits, that requires professional installations. Th these are not easy to uh, vary. Okay, A car manufacturer opening a new factory, that is not easy to do in the short run. We're talking about short run. is a period of time in which at least one input is fixed. Okay, Short run is not a fixed period of time in economics. It depends on the company. The moment you can adjust your capital, then you are out of your short run. Okay, So there is also something called quasi-fixed input. This is lumpy or indivisible input for which a fixed amount must be used for any positive level of output. None is purchased when output is zero. So again, this is something you have to pay fixed, but after you have production. Fixed input, regardless of level of production, you have to pay. Okay, so let me give examples. Variable input, let's say we are at a doctor's office. Doctor's office or a medical center, okay? Variable inputs such as your uh, medical staff, nurses, doctors, uh, so on and so forth, right? Physician's assistant. Fixed input example, for instance, all the machinery. Let's say you're an ophthalmologist, right? And then you have this machine to measure people's uh, eye function. That is a fixed input. You have to buy it. 
Even if you end up having no patients, you have to pay for that machine. Or a dentist, right? Uh, dentists have to have those special chairs. Those are expensive. Everything is expensive. <laughs> but those are fixed. But quasi-fixed, for instance, is electricity. Electricity is positive and you have to spend certain amount of money to keep the in inner internal temperature of the building constant right and if you have more clients your dental office you're going to have to use machines more often it's going to go up right so electricity is fixed though you need to keep your building at certain temperatures so if you have no patients you can turn it off something like that okay so it doesn't quasi fix doesn't depend on another example you have a doggy daycare dog daycare right uh you have to have insurance liability insurance if you if only you have customers okay that's a quasi fixed input okay let us move on short run we defined this before a time period of production during which at least one input is fixed input so capital is considered fixed therefore we're going to put a bar on top long run is a period of time far enough in the future that allow all fixed inputs to become variable so long run is in the long run everything is variable in the short run labor is variable however capital is fixed so what's the difference between short run and long run short run is a period at least one factor of production input is fixed in the long run nothing is fixed planning horizon is set of all possible short run situations the firm can face in the future okay all right let's talk about sunk costs versus avoidable costs sunk costs Payment for an input that once made cannot later be recovered should the firm no longer wish to employ that input. So an example is, for instance, you um, you are starting a transportation company for elderly. You know, it's not like Uber, but reliable uh, people who are transporting elderly. You bought a bunch of cars, right? And you decided not to go ahead with this company. It didn't work out. Well, guess what? You still have car payments to make. Bank is not going to be like, oh, you don't want to do this business? Okay, we'll cancel your payment. No, that doesn't work like that. Sunk cost is a cost. Another example is uh, if you're a renter, right? Even as a civilian, not as a business, you sign the lease. Some businesses can get out of their leases, but again, you sometimes sign the annual lease. You sign the lease. If you can't get out of it, that's a sunk cost. And if you decide not to open your uh, start operations in your factory, guess what? You uh, sign the lease on the space. You are going to go ahead and have to make your monthly payments. Sunk costs are irrelevant for all future time periods. It's not going to be part of economic cost of production in the future time periods. It should be ignored for decision making purposes. Therefore, when we draw the family of cost curves, average costs, we are not going to draw the fixed cost, average fixed cost. But we'll get to that. Fixed costs are sunk costs. So cost of, you know, fleet, car, uh, cars, lease you sign. That's the... That's an example of sunk cost. Avoidable costs, payment of an input, such as wages, right, salaries, that can be recovered should the firm no longer wish to use that input. Let's say I have a pizza joint, a uh, pizza restaurant, and I have no customers, so I'm going to shut down. I don't have to pay people their wages because I'm not employing them. Or I have a coffee shop, the cost of coffee beans if i have no customers cost of coffee beans is zero okay avoidable costs matter in decision making and should not be ignored variable costs and quasi fixed costs are avoidable costs so keep these in mind variable costs cost of labor and all those things that vary uh, ingredients quasi fixed costs that are um they have some fixed properties however you can 
reduce them to zero if you no longer wish to produce are avoidable costs. Okay, so this is a useful table. Variable input is variable cost. Relationship to output, direct labor. Labor goes up. You have more baristas. You're going to sell more coffee. I'm going to draw coffee, coffee cup. Oh, unsuccessful. It's okay. These are avoidable costs employed in both short run and long run. Fixed input cause fixed costs. They are constant fixed. They're sunk only in the short run because in the long run we don't have anything uh, we don't have any such thing as fixed costs. Quasi fixed costs, payment quasi fixed, constant, okay, they're avoidable if required short run and long run. So this concludes chapter 8 part 1. I'll see you in part 2.